to give you an insight on the first chapter of reflections of our first PUC, which is the gentleman of the jungle. And the lesson is written by very famous Kenyan author, a politician, a political figure, Yomo Kenyatta. Now, uh, before we get into the chapter as such, let us know about the author himself, Yomo Kenyatta. Even though uh, it is spelled J O M O, we are not supposed to pronounce J. We are supposed to, it is silent, so we are supposed to pronounce it as Yomo Kenyatta. Who is this man? A political uh, leader of Kenya, South Africa, Prime Minister, and further became the President of Kenya. He was born to the Kikuyu farmers of Kenya. Now, what is the story all about? Before I start with the story, let us talk about 19th century Africa. Africa and India have lot of commonalities. We can compare a lot of things which happened during those days with Africa as well as with India. Now, hope you all are aware of that India was also ruled by British, Africa was ruled by Europeans. Now, uh, everybody knows about Mahatma Gandhi, father of our nation. Are you aware that uh, Mahatma Gandhi was in Africa as well? Why? Or rather, why do we know him as one of the prominent figures of Africa as well. The reason is, my dear students, even Mahatma Gandhi had fought for the African independence. He is not only the father of nation of our country, he is father of nation of Africa as well. Have you heard and seen or watched the tri trials and tribulations of Mahatma Gandhi who had struggled so much in Africa and that's where his non-cooperation movement or non-violence movement originated. So I'll tell you some examples of, Af of Gandhi, uh, his revolt in Africa. How did it all began? Now guys, uh, if you can recollect a little bit of history, uh, Mahatma Gandhi was in Africa and one fine day, one chilled night, he was traveling in the train. Of course, he had booked the tickets, he had uh, he was rightfully traveling in the train in his birth. The unfortunate thing was rather for us uh, because we had to see Gandhi suffering at that point of time because Gandhi even though he had taken a legal ticket of his birth of, of, of that journey, he was sitting in the birth which was totally uh, uh, given to or dominated by Europeans, the white people. And Gandhi didn't know that when the ticket collector came asking for or checking for the tickets, he saw that a wheat-ish complexion or rather we are also called blackies or black, black people because we are no different. We, our complexion is also not much great than uh, the black people of, of, of the world. Uh, so Gandhi was asked to shift to another birth. Of course, Gandhi didn't agree because he had rightfully uh, bought the tickets. What was the fate awaited for Gandhi at this moment? He was thrown out of that berth from that train to that chilled platform, into that chilled night. That was his first hand experience of apartheid, racial discrimination, guys. Now, what happens next? This is the first instance where he understood the difficulties, the turmoil, the emotional uh, disturbances which has which has occurred in the minds and hearts of Africans. That's when he started his agitation against racial discrimination through his weapons of non-violence and non-cooperation. And of course, he gained, in, he got independence. He helped uh, Africa to gain independence. Later, Indians came to know with the much famous act of Gandhi which helped uh, Africans to gain their independence. So he was invited, called back to India. That's where, that's how the journey of Gandhi's struggle for independence began in India. Why am I saying all this? It's because as 
as I said earlier, we are no different uh, from Africans. We have also suffered the same fate. Africans also suffered the same fate under the hands of Europeans. Because Europeans entered Africa how and in what pretext? They wanted to extend their business relationships with Africa. Africa was also filled with indigenous people, indigenous land. Africa was also filled with a lot of richness in spice, in tradition, uh, in gold, etc. etc. So, and again, Africans were also innocent, illiterates at that moment. When somebody, when for instance, if you can imagine, when somebody says, I am going to extend a business relationship with you, come, let's join hands. So, what would you do? You would be more than happy. So, in the same way, Africans also agreed that yes, our country will develop if we you know, gain friendship with the superpowers of the world, that is Europeans. As you know, you remember, right, how uh, the British entered India on the pretext of doing business with us same mentality is being carried by Europeans even during those days in Africa and as innocent Indians were so European uh, the Africans were also equally innocent so they agreed slowly and steadily the encroachment of the colonies of Africa began by the Europeans slowly and steadily Af Europeans started uh, getting the treaty signed by Africans because and Africans were not knowing what was hidden in those treaties. So what happened to Africans, guys? They had to lose their lands. They were, they were, they had the roots. They had, their ancestors were there in those lands. Had grown, had cultivated those lands, and they had to lose their lands to, uh, to Europeans. Now, how was the story of this 19th century? Uh, rev, uh, the revolution or rather the freedom struggle is related to the story which has been prescribed for you the lesson which is prescribed for you I and you know very well that the uh, chapter or the lesson is written by Yomo Kenyatta who is Yomo Kenyatta? he is the African he was the African president so and one of the freedom struggle struggler as well he fought for their for their for his country's independence and this particular lesson is a fable, is a satire, is a moralistic story. What is a satire? Satire talks about, uh, uh, no, it takes the, uh, the worst situation slightly and knocks your heart and, th and makes us force us to think. So the whole scenario of 19th century is being put in a comic way, is being narrated in a comic way, animated way to explain to make us understand the story better the gentleman of the jungle guys just recollect just try and analyze the chapter's name itself can we have gentlemen in the jungle who are whom do we call gentlemen as who are the gentlemen what are the attributes adjectives uh, which uh, which we can claim that, uh, as uh, which we can uh, tell that these are the characteristics of a gentleman. Gentlemen are people who are modest, who are humble, who are assertive, yet dignified. Correct? There are lots of attributes for a person to be termed as a gentleman. Correct? As a gentleman. Now, who, who lives in the jungle? Do we find any gentleman in the jungle? We can only find wild animals, rather animals in the jungle. And can we term them the gentleman? Then why is that the author has named this uh, story as gentleman of the jungle? The reason is, guys, he has. We can understand that there are there is a reason, uh, there is a satirical connection to the story. Now, as I said earlier, there are two characters in the story. One are the set of animals, wild animals. Another is a, is the man that is. If you have to connect in an easier way. Let me tell you, these animals are uh, compared to the Europeans. This particular man, a hypothetical, the whole story, you can say that it's, uh, it, it's, it's like a, you can take it in a, on a lighter note, as well as you can try to analyze why is the story related to the 19th century political scenario. The, this particular man is being compared to the lot of, to the subset, to the citizens of Africa or Kenya in particular. Now, let us begin with the story. As in, as you, 
very well you know that a fable is a moral a story with a moral how does a fable start generally the fable starts as in once upon a time once upon a time there lived xyz person Even in this story, the chapter begins with the line, Once upon a time, there lived a man in the jungle who had a hut, small hut, built at the edge of the forest. So, he was, I mean, uh, as and when I explain, please try to connect the story with the African revolution or Af African freedom struggle at that point of time. And please remember, the man is compared to the Africans. Kenyans at that point of time. So this man was living peacefully in a small hut at the edge of the forest. He never entered or rather he never disturbed the life of the animals. He was in his own world in his small hut in the forest. Now who came, uh, who wanted to have, get friendship from, with this man? The elephant who was one, who was one of the animals of the forest he came and requested the friendship of this man. Man being innocent, understand, analyze the elephant, the majestic, gigantic elephant came and asked uh, friendship from, uh, uh, with this man. So obviously what would man do? The innocent human beings like us, what do we do? When a, when a, when a uh, superhuman or when a uh, charismatic leader or when a politician or when a celebrity comes and offers his friendship, do we say no? Do we say no, 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 please don't come to me. No, 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 I don't know you. You are a stranger to me. Can we say that? No, right? So obviously the man also accepted the friendship of this elephant. So what happened one day? One fine day, there was a heavy thunderstorm in the forest. There, there was like hailstorm in the forest. Elephant came, approached the man, asking for a favor. What was that favor? The favor was, uh, we, if I have to quote it from the textbook, you can go to page number two, guys. My dear good man, you will, or rather, will you please let me put my trunk inside your hut to keep it out of this torrential rain? The request from the elephant. What did the elephant request for? The elephant requested, address the friend as my dear good friend, my dear good man. See, again, what was the pretext of Europeans? Um, uh, how did they approach Africans? Saying that you are too good, you are great, you are, uh, no, the way they hyped a, a kingdom and slowly, uh, slowly encroached the whole land. Same way, over here as well, the elephant addressed the man as my dear good man. Can you please, will you please, I am requesting you, allow my trunk to be put in your hut because I cannot sustain, my body cannot sustain this torrential rain. So can I just put my trunk into your little hut? Uh, what was the reply of, the, of this man? The man being so innocent, he says, of course you can. The reason is, even though my hut is so very small and even though I am sitting in this hut, there is a little space left inside my hut. That little space you can definitely occupy. That means your, you can put in your trunk into my hut and I can save your hut, save your uh, trunk from this torrential rain. The elephant was very happy. What did he do? He, you might have, you might, you can understand the uh, next scene by now. The elephant first put its trunk inside the hut. Later, what did he do? He put his head inside the trunk. Later what did he do? He had to enter the hut. There is, it's a small place. He had to flung the man out. So the man was thrown out of his own hut. His own hut. And he was put, it, put into the torrential rain. He had to stand in that heavy rain, rainfall. And the elephant sat comfortably in the man's hut. What was the dialogue told by the elephant at that point of time? Again I want to quote it from the textbook. The elephant quotes or rather says, My dear good friend, your skin is harder than mine and as there is not enough room for both of us, you can afford to remain in the rain while I am protecting my delicate skin from the hailstorm. Just check this guys. 
the elephant is saying that his skin is so delicate it cannot sustain the storm it cannot sustain the thunderstorm however the man's skin is very very hard so he can sustain the thunderstorm that's the explanation which is given by the elephant so elephant throws out throws the man out so what would man do understand the same what the scene the scenario you every moment i keep repeating please connect the scenario to the 19th century africa now what is the next step what does the man do obviously when you are thrown out of your house how will you react you start fighting before do you fight you start grumbling you start crying you start howling you start uh, you know crying saying that oh this is an injustice done to me how can i how can some how can somebody else enter my house etc etc the same thing happens the same way the man reacts over here he also starts crying he also starts yelling he also starts grumbling saying that this is an injustice done to me to him etc etc what happens next as we all are aware of when a situation happens in our society say there is an accident on the road there is a pity quarrel uh, in your neighborhood in your neighbor's house do we what, uh, do we go and check in or try to pacify try to make a ceasefire between the parties no what do we do instead we go and have a look oh something is happening let me go and check let me may take fun of it same thing happens here as well the rest of the animals in the jungle hearing the noise hearing this fight came and was they started watching the scene they started what watching the uh, situation and nobody interfered nobody interfered but obviously who had to interfere here the king of the jungle the lion had to interfere because he was disturbed he was sleeping in his den so because of that noise because of that you uh, know the the noise pollution for that matter he came majestically into the uh, scene he entered the scene and he was shocked to see so many animals gathered and the man is howling and crying so he asks what the what's the matter what is the confusion all about why are you why are you disturbing the peace and tranquility of my kingdom peace and tranquility because as a king a king expects everything should be normal should be calm should be quiet everything should go on smoothly over here as well the king comes and the lion comes and asks what is the matter why are you so why are you crying so much what is what is wrong with you now elephant uh, who is now by now you you might be aware of his character the cunning elephant manipulative elephant came and he starts he started addressing the uh, situation and in fact elephant is one of the high ministers in the committee of or in the government and in the lion's kingdom in the jungle so the elephant comes in and and tries to convey or tries to uh, uh, soothe the situation he st he started saying not to worry um, king not to worry because there was actually no confusion there is just there was no fight also there was a little discussion which was happening what was the discussion all about discussion was about to check who is the rightful owner of this hut under whose possession this hut will be or is is this the discussion which i am doing with my very good friend who is here the man so elephant the lion says who oh, is that so then uh, when he also hears of course from he also wants to know what's the matter from the man's point of view unfortunately that was the situation didn't uh, comply by what is the next step what what does a king do obviously a king says that okay let us sort out this issue how will we sort how will a issue be sorted out a commission will be set correct a bench will be set so over here as well the lion says that okay come let's uh, uh, he addresses he uh, rather directs the elephant saying that you set up a commission commission of inquiry commission of inquiry students is also called imperial commission understand this commission of inquiry is also called imperial commission so the in charge of setting up of this commission was given to none other than the elephant the lion assured the man as well not to worry don't worry my dear friend in fact you've done a good deed being very friendship with this 
lion. He is one of the high ministers of the jungle, so not to worry. In fact, you will get a lot of opportunity to state your case as well. Pass. So what is the man's reaction to this? He was very happy listening to this sugar-coated words. Sugar-coated words. So he was waiting patiently for the judgment or for the verdict to start. Now, who is the who is in charge of setting up the uh, the commission? Elephant. You can imagine. You can uh, rather foretell the story now. What would be the judgment? Uh, well, let's wait. Let's see what is the judgment going to be. What is the fate of this man or fate of the elephant? First, let's see now. The elephant has been given the charge to set up the commission. Whom will be will will he put on in that bench of uh, the people who are going to discuss the case? Who are the members of the commission? Very important, guys. This question will be asked. Uh, again, is asked also in fact a number of times will be asked in your in your further exams as well. So let us know who are the members of the commission. First, understand members. The, the understand the nature of these members as well. Mr. Rhinoceros, Mr. Buffalo, Mr. Alligator, Right Honorable. Mr. Fox to act as the chairman. Mr. Fox, the most cunning animal we've known, he has been made the chairman of the commission. And Mr. Leopard, again a cunning animal, as the secretary to the commission. So now you know why the man uh, is worried. Of course, man is worried. First reason is worried because in the members or in the commission, there are no human being or rather a person from his side to sit in the bench. He, did, he obviously asked, why aren't no men in this commission? Why are only animals made the members of the commission? What is the, what is the question What is the question and what is the answer? Hey, it was this is a relevant question, right? So how will, what is the answer for this question? The cut throat answer given to this question by the animals was, see, we are well educated. You guys, you human beings are not. Moreover, you do not know the uh, intricacies of jungle law. You are not aware of the intricacies of jungle law. What do you mean by intricacies? The teeny weeny rules and regulations as well are the intricacies of the jungle law. Obviously, the man couldn't say much because what will happen? If at all he says no, if he says, I have to have one somebody from my side, would, then would he be hurt? No, he had to shut his mouth. He has to wait for the, for the bench to start the hearing. The day also came, the judgment day came, wherein the proceedings begin. For the, and the pros and cons, do's and don'ts of the hearing is supposed to happen. Did this happen? Your guess is right. So, so uh, the judgment day came. Elephant was called first to present his case. How did the elephant come? You might have heard, you might have read in the chapter as well. You might have seen how the elephant walks. Just the mere walks makes it so majestic, so gigantic. So the elephant walks having carrying a sapling in its trunk. Who gave the sapling? Sapling was given by Mrs. Elephant, the wife of this elephant. He is holding the sapling in his trunk and he enters the arena majestically. And obviously the parties are over here, are elephant and the man. Okay, fine. The elephant was called to present his case. Elephant started talking, started narrating what actually happened in his own version. That is the elephant's version. What is elephant's version? The elephant says that, in fact, I didn't go there. I didn't ask for the favor. Who asked the favor? The man himself asked the favor. What was the favor? The man asked the help from the elephant to save his hut from this hurricane, from this thunderstorm, because his hut could have blown away. Because he was a tiny creature compared to the animals, obviously we are tiny creatures. He is a tiny creature sitting in that small hut. If the hut 
hat is blown away he would lose his hat so the man requested the elephant to sell his hat that is the reason the elephant claims that he entered the hut to save the hut from being blown away because and rather he says further he says that it's not only me who would have done this anybody for that matter who really wants to help the neighbors the friends he the the same act would have been repeated it's not that me who have done this even if you were in my place you would have also done the same thing this is the um, the uh, pre, uh, this is how the elephant presented his case so what is next supposed to be the man's hearing didn't happen the rest of the animals and so called witnesses entered the arena witnesses were asked to present their witness so everybody supported elephant obviously every person rather that every animals supported elephant fine that's also said and done what should be the next step man should be heard correct was the man heard man wanted to in fact talk man wanted to say his version as well but he was cut short he was not allowed to talk he was said please tell what actually happened did somebody else if you can get back to the page number 5 guys the question which has been asked to this man is please confine yourself to relevant issues now all we wish you to tell us is whether the undeveloped space in your hut was occupied by anyone else before mr elephant assumed this position so obviously what would be the answer to this man was there anybody else before this elephant this no no so obviously the answer would be no but man wanted to say further was he allowed no he was cut short he was not allowed to say his version of the situation so what happens next obviously the uh, uh, the court is retired the members retire to give the decision to discuss and give the decision now you can understand guys what you can foretell you can predict the decision the reason is the elephant had given them all the members of the commission sumptuous meal delicious meal at his own expense that means to say kind of a bribe to these animals so that they can give the judgment in the favor of elephant so the judgment there was no surprise judgment was that this situation arose due to the misunderstanding of the backwardness misunderstanding which is created due to the backwardness of this man so ultimately the blame came to the man but not to the elephant however what did the jury say what did they say in fact they said don't worry my dear friend this hut is no more yours this hut belongs to this elephant because he has in fact saved this hut because you are a tiny creature you cannot develop into you cannot extend to yourself to save this hut fit the hut fit in the hut properly so you can build another hut in a, another place in in the jungle and we will take care of your rights you don't have to worry so build another hut for yourself and go and stay there this was the verdict given was man satisfied with this never in fact he wanted to revolt he wanted to say impossible this is this is a very very in, uh, you know cruel injustice which has been done to me but he couldn't open his mouth why if he had opened his mouth what would have happened to him he would have been killed what are what are those terms which are used by the by the author in this chapter page number 5 last paragraph if at all he had opened his mouth to reject the verdict he would have exposed himself to the teeth and claws of the members of commission teeth and claws they would have encroached him they would have killed him torn him apart so he had to sit agree whatever he uh, the verdict had uh, whatever the commission had told him to do so yes there was no choice he he went to another place he built built another hut for himself 
You can imagine what would have happened. As soon as he built this new hut, the fate again was set for him. Rhinoceros charged into this hut of the man, the new hut of this man, and again he was kicked out of his own hut. It's not the story didn't end here, guys. The story again, the history repeated again and again and again and again. He used to build the hut. The other animals came, used to get the they was they used to occupy the hut. Another hut, another animal, another hut, another animal. Like this, there were lots of huts built. Lots of animals um, encroached those huts, and in fact, every animal were placed in their in their respective huts built by whom? By man. What will happen now? Will somebody take this exploitation forever and ever? Will somebody take this injustice forever and ever? Can you or I do this? Can you or I say, okay, you are exploiting me? You are uh, blaming me for a number of reasons, X, Y, Z reasons. Okay, keep blaming me. Shall we take it for uh, forever and ever? No, no. We will put our foot down. We will say, enough is enough. We will not take this anymore. The same thing, same mindset was in the, uh, the same mindset was the man's. He started to think it. Why should I take this further? Why am I not revolting? He says, enough. I am not going to take this. I am going to put my foot down. I am going to teach these animals a lesson. What was that lesson? Which something unimaginable happened here. The most uh, unexpected thing happened here. He says, or rather he did, something very drastic. He built a big hut, a bigger hut, wherein he could put in all the animals under one roof, under one roof, a big hut. Why and what you, you will come to know now. Uh, simultaneously, what happened? As, as you know very well, once the hut was built, the animal used to come, one or the other animal used to come and occupy. Now it was a big hut, so more, almost all the animals wanted to occupy that hut because their existing huts were getting decayed. Their existing huts were getting decayed. So, in slowly and steadily, the rhinoceros entered the hut. To his surprise, who was there already sitting? And rather sleeping. The elephant was already sleeping. Like this, the rest of the animals entered the hut. Say, for example, the leopard came from the window. Mr. Lion, rhinoceros, buffalo, uh, fox, everybody entered entered through the doors while Mr. Hyena howled for a place in the shade. Mr. Alligator was already on the roof, basking on the roof. So every possible animal was inside the hut. So obviously what will happen? Everybody started arguing, fighting for the root, for their for their place, for, for the right of penetration because they feel that it is the, it is their hut. So obviously everybody started fighting. And they completely forgot that actually the man was the most negligible creature there. So they completely forgot. What did the man do now? He actually lit the hut with fire. The whole hut burnt down into ashes. Not just the hut, all the animals which were in the hut, they burnt down into ashes. Now what is the... I mean you can understand guys the frustration which the man was carrying all this while, the emotional turmoil what he had gone through all this while, why should he take such a drastic step, knowing that it is going to cost such richness, such wild life, because all, the, all these animals are assets of the jungle, he had to take this drastic step, violent step, because he was exploited to that extent, he was uh, he had to. He was made to struggle for the, to this extent, so he had to put an end. He, in fact, one of the sentences in the lesson talks about. Rather, he says, "There is nothing that treads on the earth that cannot be trapped. You can fool people for some time, for a little time, but not for ever." What do you mean by that? For one, for at, okay, once you're fooled, twice you're fooled. Third time, you know you're getting fooled, but still you say, okay, anyways, he's my friend, or uh, I mean, it's okay. After all, he's my friend. But if it keeps on repeating, will you take it? So, he says, nothing that treads on the 
this earth can be cannot be trapped that means to say if you have your mind and heart fixed on something if you want to do something decide on something you can do it you will do it you need to have that goal that purpose or that motto in life be that okay i have decided on something i want to achieve it uh, this is the mindset which the man carries at that moment so he says nothing nothing doing i am not going to uh, take this i am i need to put a stop full stop to this so ultimately he got all the animals together under one roof he um, burned the hut down and complete complete ash and he walks out peacefully saying that peace is costly but it's worth the expense yes or no guys peace is costly but it's worth the expense what do you mean by that let's try and analyze this proverb very famous saying a very famous proverb peace is costly what is costly why is it costly see let's take an example of a metro metro stations metro ride which we enjoy because metro ride metro stations or metro rides are connected throughout bangalore almost almost so we reach a destination very soon where where we were taking one one and a half hours we reached there within 30 minutes or 45 45 minutes how did this happen who made this happen the met, the workers of metros the engineers who who planned for the uh, stations who the architects who tried to analyze the designs because of their hard work we are able to enjoy the luxury of metro rides yes or no so just understand peace is costly the enjoyment what you get is not it doesn't come free of cost you need to earn that peace because the reason why we are using that metro ride so luxuriously the reason is the people have worked for it day in and day out 24 hours years together they have channeled the process and ultimately we are enjoying that so for whatever reason guys in the future as well you want to earn something you want to stay happily forever you want to have a comfortable life earn it struggle it struggle for it and obviously the struggle will always reap good results so nothing comes free in this world you need to earn it even here he had to earn his peace that's the reason the story talks about as i said in the beginning the the you know the freedom struggle which africans had to undergo to for their freedom of course there were a lot of there were a lot of fight there were there was a lot of bloodshed there was a lot of death but ultimately they got freedom as in india as well we are aware how much our people our ancestors fought to gain this freedom which we are enjoying today it never came free of cost they had to lay down their lives correct the same way guys peace doesn't come easily for anybody for that matter you have to struggle for it that is the moral of the story hope you enjoyed listening to me hope you understood whatever i try to explain any doubts any clarifications you expect from me please share, put it in the chat box please comment and uh, i'll i'm there to help you out to clarify all the doubts and if you want me to add anything else in the explanation part please let me know be free to let me know so that i can change i can help you out in a better better manner thank you all for listening to me i hope you like my narration have a good day